Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain the different types of myopathies. Like every other teaching video, we're going to learn this topic by solving questions so that you're able to apply this knowledge more effectively in the future. If you're interested in medical videos, quizzes, interviews with doctors, and many other things related to medicine, do subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram. Myopathy basically refers to diseases that affect the muscles of our body. They usually present with muscle pain or weakness. We can differentiate one from another based on history, symptoms and labs. So let's get to the first one by solving this question. Question number one. Which of the following will be seen in patients with myopathy secondary to Cushing disease? Option A. Normal CK, high ESR. Option B. High CK, normal ESR. Option C, normal CK, normal ESR. Option D, high CK, high ESR. The answer to this question is normal CK and normal ESR. CK stands for creatinine kinase, which is a component of muscles. So whenever there's damage to muscles, the CK leaks out from the muscle tissue and enters the blood. Hence, an increase in CK levels in the blood can indicate muscle damage. ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. A high ESR indicates underlying inflammation. In Cushing disease, the amount of corticosteroids are high. Now, we know that steroids reduce inflammation. So, ESR will not be high because that's like the opposite, right? And the muscle weakness seen in patients with Cushing disease is because corticosteroids can cause atrophy of muscles. So, there's no actual muscle damage. Hence, the level of creatinine kinase is also normal. People with Cushing disease or corticosteroid-induced myopathies will present with proximal muscle weakness and atrophy. They are more likely to involve the lower extremities. And like we saw before, the ESR and CK levels will be normal. Question number 2. A patient complains of left-sided headache and stiffness in the shoulders. Her ESR is high and creatinine kinase levels are normal. What should we be worried about? Option A. Rhabdomyolysis. Option B. Blindness. Option C. Underlying malignancy. The answer to this question is blindness. High ESR along with stiffness in the shoulders points towards polymyalgia rheumatica. This condition presents with stiffness and tenderness majorly in the shoulder and pelvic girdle. The reason why our patient is experiencing headaches could be due to the fact that this condition is associated with giant cell arteritis. This is a kind of vasculitis that affects the branches of the carotid arteries. These patients should be given steroids immediately because if there's ophthalmic artery involvement, it can lead to blindness. The CK levels in these patients will be normal because there's no actual muscle damage taking place. But since there's inflammation involved, the ESR levels will be high. Since this condition presents with joint stiffness, I think of it more of a joint issue than a muscle issue. So, the CK will be normal. Since this condition is associated with arteritis, it reminds me that there is some kind of inflammation going on, which is why the ESR is high. Rhabdomyolysis is not likely in patients with polymyalgia rheumatica. Underlying malignancy is associated with inflammatory myopathies, which is what we're going to see next. Patients with inflammatory myopathies present with proximal muscle weakness and muscle pain. Always make sure you screen these patients for underlying malignancies. In these patients, anti-nuclear antibodies will be positive. Along with this antibody, there are some other antibodies which are very specific to this condition. Inflammatory myopathies are also associated with interstitial lung disease. So basically, in this condition, these antibodies are causing muscular damage. So since there's inflammation as well as muscular damage, both ESR and CK levels will be high in these patients. Question number 3. Which of the following is likely to present with high ESR, high CK and a skin rash affecting the nasolabial folds? Option A. Systemic lupus erythematosus. Option B. Polymyositis. Option C. Dermatomyositis. The answer to this question is dermatomyositis. Inflammatory myopathies are of two kinds, dermatomyositis and polymyositis. They both have the above-mentioned features. What makes one different from another is the skin involvement. Rotten papules and a helotrope rash may be seen in dermatomyositis. 
Note that this differs from lupus because the rash in this condition involves the nasolabial folds. On the other hand, in lupus, the rash spares the nasolabial folds, giving it a butterfly appearance. I have an entire video on lupus, so make sure you check that out for more questions and explanations on that topic. Coming back to inflammatory myopathies, another thing that differentiates these two conditions is the location of inflammation. Let's say this is the skin and this is the muscle. Dermatomyositis has perimesial inflammation while polymyositis has endomesial inflammation. Here's how I remember it. Since the perimesium is the outer layer of muscles, it is closer to the skin. And skin reminds me of the word derm in dermatomyositis. So, perimesial inflammation is seen in dermatomyositis while endomesial inflammation is seen in polymyositis. Question number 4. All of the following conditions have normal ESR and high CK except Option A. Hypothyroid myopathy Option B. Statin-induced myopathy Option C. Fibromyalgia the answer to this question is fibromyalgia. Before we get to it, let's speak about statin-induced myopathy. These patients are likely to present with muscle pain but no muscle weakness. I remember this by thinking that statin is associated with strength, so there's no weakness. Sounds like a really bad joke but that kinda helps me remember this. Note that these patients are at risk of rhabdomyolysis. Since there's only muscle damage and no inflammation, the ESR will be normal while CK levels will be high. Similarly, in patients with hypothyroidism, the ESR will be normal and the CK levels will be high. This can be differentiated from statin-induced myopathy based on the patient's history and the presence of hypothyroid features. Fibromyalgia is a condition in which patients complain of muscle pain throughout the body. It may also be associated with fatigue and certain pain points. Note that despite the muscle pain, the CK and ESR levels will be normal in these patients. So that's about it for this video. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.